your vodcast on tree anatomy. Remember, before you start this in your notes, please put a date on the heading tree anatomy in your notes so you can keep your stuff organized. Okay, when we're talking about tree anatomy, what we're really talking about is what's inside the tree. Just like when we talk about human anatomy, we talk about what's inside us, the organs and things that make us up. So when we first look inside a tree, through a cross-section of a tree, uh, one of the most distinctive features are the rings. So we're going to talk a little bit about those rings and what those rings mean. Um, most people think that these rings are made during uh, each year, and so you can tell the age of a tree based on the number of rings it has. But actually a tree puts down two rings in every year. It puts down a ring of spring wood and then a ring of summer wood. So we're just going to talk about these a little bit and how you can tell the difference between them. If you look at this picture of this tree cross-section, you'll see there are darker rings and then also lighter rings. i point those out to you here. So if they're kind of wrapping around the central core there, and some are darker and some are lighter, hopefully that shows up for you okay. All right, so the lighter ones are actually the spring wood. So we're going to talk about the spring wood a little bit first. So the spring wood, you want to write down spring wood, is lighter in color. And it's also wider, a wider ring. Okay, so it's a thicker ring than the summer wood. Now the reason it's lighter in color and wider is because there's typically more rain in the spring. So when the tree is growing this layer of wood, it's got lots of water. So we're going to put more H2O. And lots of water means the cells get bigger because the cells store the water. If there's lots of water, those cells have to be big to store it. So bigger cells. So if you look again at this diagram over here on the left of this tree cookie, you'll be able to see that there are some lighter rings that are easily visible as being the spring wood. Okay, we're going to erase these real quick and then talk about that summer wood. Okay, again, looking at the diagram, you can see that there is some darker rings that go around as well. That's our summer wood. So this is basically going to be the opposite here of our spring wood. They're the darker rings. They're also thinner. And I bet you can figure out why that is. There's less rain in the summer, right? So if there's less rain in the summer, less water, that means the cells are going to be smaller because they don't need to store as much water. So we'll put small cells. Okay, make sure you get that all written in. I'm going to erase this and move on to the next piece of anatomy. Okay, now the next thing you can notice about the interior of a tree is if it's hardwood or softwood. There, you can't really see this in a picture, um, but if you've ever worked with different types of wood before, like building something, you've probably noticed this. Okay, our hardwoods tend to be a little bit more dense or highly packed, you could say. So we're going to say this side is the hardwood. Okay, more dense, the cells are more tightly packed. And so um, when you pick it up, it seems more solid. These would be the woods that you've maybe worked with before, like oak, walnut. You'll get a chance to see these in class as well and definitely see that they are different from the softwoods. The softwoods, again, are kind of just the opposite. They are very not dense. So you can feel it when you pick them up that they seem to have more air in them, more air pockets. And they tend to be a lot of your pines. Okay, cedar is also in that category. Okay, um, ash is a soft wood. So we do work with these a little bit in woodworking, but they're used for different things also. So durability, you're going to build things out of oak and walnut where pine, cedar, ash don't hold up as well. They dent more. If you've ever run into you know, something that's made out of pine, the pine will actually dent in because it's so soft. 
Okay, I'm going to erase these and we'll move on to the next one. Alright, the third piece of anatomy I want to look at is something called the heartwood versus the sapwood. And again, this one's easy to show with a picture. And there's not much really we have to define about them, it's just what do they look like. So in this particular picture, the heartwood is really easy to see. You can see how there's this uh, darker area that's all around, get it circled here. Hmm. Get my pen to work here. Okay. Well, it doesn't want to cooperate. Hopefully you can see that without me circling it for you. That there's this darker area all around the center. That's the heartwood. Okay, so the heartwood is darker. Again, my pen just does not want to cooperate. Let's see if we can get it to do this. Excuse me. Okay, there we go. Just make it a little thicker and here we go. So the heartwood is darker, typically in the center. Okay, so that's this area here that I was trying to circle before. Whereas the sapwood is the lighter area. Let me get a chance to erase this and then we'll get that labeled. All right, so over here is our sapwood. Again, that's lighter in color. And as far as its location, it's on the edges. Oops, edges. Okay, and different types of species of trees have different amounts of heartwood. Like some trees will only have heartwood like right here in the middle, and it'll be sapwood all the way out to the edge from there but it's always darker in color and toward the middle when you're looking for your heartwood. Okay, let me erase that. And I think we've got one more topic of anatomy to discuss here. All right, the last one I wanna talk about is something called compression wood. And again, you can see this really nicely in this photo that I've given you. What I want you to look at here is the arrangement of the rings. Okay, the rings themselves, as you can see, are visible around the center of where the tree was growing, which is right here. But you can see how there's a whole bunch more rings in space over here, whereas the rings are all squished together on this side. Okay, this is where the compression is. So the compression is right there. I'm just going to label that compression. You need to draw yourself a diagram of this to remember what this looks like. Go ahead. And basically what happens in compression wood is the tree isn't growing straight up. So the tree grows at an angle. And the result of that is the rings are off center. So I'm gonna erase this down here to give me some room. And write it out, rings are off center. Okay. So that's one clue that you can tell from a cross-section of a tree is what direction was it growing? Was it growing straight up? Was it growing over at an angle? Um, what was going on as that tree was actually um, in the production of those rings? Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do with tissues then, now that we've gone through kind of all the ring structures, is to look a little bit more closely at those rings and what their actual function is. So what do they really do?
Um, this little diagram of a cross-section is obviously drawn out for you instead of um, a photo of one so you can see the rings a little bit better. We are not going to talk about every single one of these numbers on here. We're just going to talk about a few of them. So as I um, go through what the numbers are and what they do, then you'll probably want to draw the diagram only using the numbers that I've actually given you. All right, this will make more sense as we go through it. So for example, number six, okay, which is right there. Okay, here's our number six. Oh, and I better get rid of our compression wood here. Okay, so number six, uh, as it says right up here, is considered or called the outer bark. And that makes sense, right? Everybody knows the outside of the tree has the bark on it. And that is used for protection of the tree. So protection from insects, protection from you know cold weather, protection from um, dry weather, so losing extra moisture, things like that. So it's kind of like the tree's skin. The next one that you need to be aware of is number five. Number five is found right over here. Okay, so that's this kind of um, lighter area right inside the inner bark. Let me see if I can actually color it in for you a little bit so you can see it a little better. Get my pen right in there. Okay, see this lighter area right between the um, outer bark and then that dark black line? So this is called the inner bark or the phloem. And what that's responsible for doing is moving sap through the tree. Okay, you probably all know that trees have sap that run through them, the sticky, watery substance that we can make, for example, maple sugar out of in a maple tree. Well, this phloem moves the sap downward. So when the sugar is made in the leaves, it's going to move down through the trunk of the trees to the roots where it's going to be stored. Okay, so the phloem is responsible for that movement. Okay, the next one we need to talk about is the cambium, which is number four, and that is that dark line of cells. Okay, I think that one's pretty easy to see. <coughs> Excuse me. Kind of a bad time to start sneezing. Okay, so that cambium, or that dark line of cells, are the dividing cells. So this is where we actually get the growth of the tree. So this is where that spring wood or that summer wood is actually forming. The next one, number 10, are the wood rays. And these are these lines that run perpendicular. And again, I'll do them in a different color so you can see them a little better. They run perpendicular here to the actual rings. All right, their job is to move the sap outward. So that sugary, watery substance that is made by the tree has to move all through the tissues. The wood rays will do that. The last one I want you to uh, diagram for yourself is called the pith. It's for support, and so you could probably guess it's right here, and I'll do a third color here, right here in the middle of the tree, this black dot that I'm circling around, number one, the pith. Um, that one is obviously, like I said, to support the tree, so that uh, center core of tissue that gives the tree strength is called the pith. All right, that is it for your tree anatomy. Like I said, you want to draw this diagram um, in your notebook, but only worry about those particular um, numbers that are listed on the side here. So again, it's 6, 5, 4, 10, and 1. So draw a little diagram of yourself with those labeled, and then make sure you also know what they're called. So for example, 5 is the outer bark, and what it does, needed for protection. So if you need to pause this for a minute, and get that all down, go ahead. Otherwise, this is the end of the vodcast.